In this video, I'm going to be giving you a very short introduction to right angle trigonometry, in other words, using sine, cosine, and tangent. I won't be showing you what the graphs of each of these functions look like. That'll be another uh, section uh, under trigonometry as well. But in this case, I'm just going to show you how to use, um, you know, we can use things with right angle triangles like we were doing with Pythagoras. This time, we're going to work with actual angles. So first of all, I'd like to give you a uh, just a diagram or a drawing of a triangle. It doesn't matter really how I draw it, but I may as well make it like this right here. But uh, by the way, my triangle could easily be upside down, right side up. I could do anything I want with it. In other words, I could take this whole thing right here, and I could uh, you know try to rotate the whole thing. I could have it, in other words, looking like you know this, or I could look like you know some weird function like this. I mean, it could be whatever you want it to look like. All these are right angle triangles like this. Right here. Okay, I'm just going to show it to you like this because I want this one right here to look simple here. So this one right here. So I'm going to erase the other two. So in a right angle triangle, we're going to name the sides. Okay, we often call this uh, longest one, we were just learning before, it's called the hypotenuse. So I'm going to write that down. Hypotenuse. And over here, uh, well then these two right here are going to have names depending on what angle I'm looking at. So for example, what if the angle I want is this angle theta? We often use the Greek symbol theta for unknown angles. Now the hypotenuse is no doubt. That's because it's opposite to the right angle, so to speak. It's the longest side. A lot of times we're going to call the hypotenuse just h. h for hypotenuse. That's going to be short form for hypotenuse is h. Now for this angle right here, if we are looking at this angle theta, then imagine your theta, so to speak, you're sitting here looking out this way. That's opposite to you. So this opposite side we're going to call opposite, oddly enough. And that means we're going to call it O instead of opposite, just for short. And the one that's beside it then, the other one, we're going to call that adjacent. Because right? that's an English word that means you know, kind of beside or along. So in this case adjacent, we're going to use a little A for adjacent. Now keep in mind though, what if I had it like this? What if the same diagram I had, uh, oops, I didn't do a very nice drawing job, did I? But what if this right here was theta? Turns out I would name them differently. H would still be hypotenuse, it would still be in the same place, but now the opposite to this angle right here, now this one, if you look at your, this angle here, so this one over here would become opposite. Opposite here. And this one over here would be adjacent. Just keep that in mind, that the adjacent and opposite ones can switch depending on where your angle is you're looking for. If you want that angle, then this one's called opposite, that one's adjacent. But if on this triangle like this you want this angle, then this one's called adjacent and that one's opposite. However, hypotenuse is always the one opposite to the 90 degrees. So just uh, talking a little bit about naming there, I hope that helps. Now for right angle geometry, uh, trigonometry, again, it's only going to work for, so only for right angle triangles. Okay, again, this only works for right angle triangles. Really important here. Okay, I'm trying to make this you know, an important fact. So we can only use these nice little tricks with right angle triangles. And now we've got a trick for this. I'm going to show you what these different uh, words mean, so to speak. So we're going to have something called sine, we're going to have something called cosine, and we're going to have something called tangent. Okay, sine, cosine, and tangent. Now a lot of times uh, there is a relation between these different uh, angles here. And the way it works is this. Um, I'll just write them down, these three rules. These are the important thing here, okay? That's sine. Now normally sine is going to be actually just called sin for short. Cosine is going to be called cos, and tangent is going to be called tan. So you notice I make my t's a little bit weird sometimes. That's, I do that because uh, I don't want it to look like a plus. So to speak. So this case right here, if I want sine of something, oops, I'm just going to try to move this down here or maybe just erase it, draw it again. So I know that the sine of an angle is going to be the opposite side length divided by the hypotenuse. It's important to write these down once like this. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Then cosine, so cos of theta, is going to be adjacent over 
hypotenuse. And tangent, in other words, tan of theta is going to be equal to, oops, I should be careful here. That's going to be equal to um, opposite over adjacent. Now it's important first of all to talk about, uh, well maybe I'll put these uh, big stars by it. That's really important right here. Okay, that sine and cosine and tangent, this is how they're related. Now we often have a little trick for these, but I just want to talk about what sine actually is. Sine is actually a graph. You can do a graph of sine of x. I'll show you that in the next video, for example. And you can also do a graph of cos x and a graph of tan x. But I mean, x is just an unknown thing, so we can call it theta if we want to. So cos theta, tan theta, and sine theta. Now these are equations. Okay, these are these are different. These work in very different ways. They make really curvy looking things. So for example. Um, Actually, I may as well show you now. I'll just show you a quick curve, for example. If you want to see what sine look like, sine actually looks like, if this is x and this is y, um, depending on what mode I'm in, so to speak. I'll talk about that in a second. Sine looks like this. But cosine, for example, does the same sort of thing, except it starts up here, for example. And then tangent, by the way, this is y and this is x. If I want something with a tangent, it does some really weird things. It actually goes, you know, weird graphs like this. Here. So tangent does some weird stuff. Depending on if it's this way, it can also go that way, depending on what you're doing with your tangent. But it actually does these weird sort of stripes like this, depending on what type of graph you're looking at. We'll be talking about, if you want to find out what exactly all these look like, you can go see, um, you go look for videos about transformations. I haven't done them yet, but I'll definitely be working on those uh, later on because they're very, very important. Just to show you roughly, I mean, these are just, this sine theta is actually a graph. And the idea is that we're trying to find out um, how these different opposite divided by hypotenuse, if we know that value, we can actually find what sine is. So it's a little bit awkward to try to show you how to do sine, cosine, and tangent without working with the equations. But oftentimes you're expected in uh, school to do that. You normally haven't learned about how these equations work until you've actually seen, sorry, you haven't uh, learned how these equations work. Um, and yet you're still expected to use this sine, cosine, and tangent. So I think that gets a little bit weird. Now a nice little trick though for you, I just want to teach you that, um, is that in order to remember this, you know, how sine works opposite over hypotenuse and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse and tan is opposite over adjacent. Remember I nicknamed them H and O and A. So at least in uh, North America we certainly learn a trick that we call it so ka I've seen some people, by the way, write the O over the H or something like that. What this really stands for, this tells you that sine theta, that's what the S stands for, S is sine, and you just have to remember that it's always equal to O is opposite divided by hypotenuse. Okay, so that tells you basically it's like S is O over H, and C is A over H, and T is O over A. That's why some people actually prefer to write it like this, so, with an H, sorry. Some people write it like ka and then toa. Now soka toa doesn't actually mean anything. It's just a weird way of remembering it. So this way is maybe a little bit easier to look at. So this right here tells you that, yeah, again, sine theta is opposite over, a, uh, over a hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. You know then that cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So A over H, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan theta is equal to O over A. In other words, opposite over adjacent. So in the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to actually use these. Because this may sound really obscure and really quite strange. Okay, but uh, these right here can actually be used in order to sort of um, figure out what to do with angles. And I'll show you that with a little calculator as well.